Okay, so obviously you've got your styrene and your various bits and pieces, but if you need a square piece of um, styrene rod of obviously for doing these gun mounts, a quick and easy way to do it is to take a piece of um, styrene strip, so if you find one with not too many lumps and bumps on it, just like that. And what you do, if you take out a really strong file, just like this, and then basically just sand it flat. Now the beauty about using styrene rod like this is it's pretty nice to work with because it sands well, um, and then obviously you can then drill it and various bits and pieces, but you can make this into a square piece or a rectangle or anything else just by popping along just like this. So if we just do this one to show you, what we do, we'll turn this into a clear, sorry, a clear, a square um, piece of rod. So we just do it like this. We make it a bit of a rectangle on the inside. This you could use for any um, type of working, so if we just bring you in to show you. There we go, we've got it just like this, and that gives you a nice square piece. So instead of going around perhaps buying, um, you know, actual bits of square um, stick like this for basically doing scratch building and various bits and pieces, you can do something like that. Okay, so using that flat sprue idea we were just doing there, flattening off to make a bar, uh, what we've actually got is these bars where the mini guns fit to them and hang out the side. Now, if you have a look at this picture here, you can see that there's a bar running along, along and then it has a handle underneath and the various bits. So I've just made it really out of a bit of uh, plastic card just like this um, by putting them on. So all it basically is is a two mil uh, by sort of one and a half mil um, plastic piece of, as you say, the old sprue we used to flatten off. A couple of bits of styrene, which is just going to make it so it's on the axis so it can swing out if needed. Okay, it's not going to, but you know, the actual thing's there for it. And then what we've got is a couple of strips of styrene and a little bit of styrene rod, which is that handle thing that you can see um, with the yellow and black bars on it. So all we've got to do now is just add another uh, bottom bit. So what we do, we're roughly doing this to size at the moment. It's not, you know, you can, obviously there's two ways of doing this. You could measure it all out now and put it together and be perfect. Or you can put it on there like I'm going to do and then just trim it into shape once it's set and on there hard and you can sand it in like these here, a little bit too wide for what we need. But there we go, that just gives us an idea. So what we do, we're just gonna place a blob of this extra thin on there for the minute. And then what we can do, we can sit these in which is going to hold that handle so we've got one on the top and then one on the bottom just like so okay it's a little bit wide then all we do we take a it's got a bit of styrene rod here there again you could just thin it down and do it as you need it we're just going to cut off about three or four mil which will make our little handle going on back here then all we do, put it in there, and we're going to rest it up against the top versus the bottom. And there we go. By the time we paint that up, that will give us our little handle, which then goes to where the gun is going to be, which is right over the top of this hole here. It's going to hang out. So we've got them. They're quite basic for the minute, but by the time we paint them up, a little bit of dry brushing on there to give them the scuff look that they've got. Um, and then we can actually put a couple of holes when this is set in the top here, where it would be obviously a pin dropping down there and bits like that. But when they're on there, it will just give an effect at the top. So by the time we have the ammo belt feeding down from the top and the wiring coming down from the top and everything else, it will just busy up that entire cockpit um, this window area which will be in here because on this one as I say we'll have the door fitted to the bottom it's going to have an armored plate across it as well as they have and then you'll have your gun hanging out so by the time we have the rescue hoist up here you're not going to be able to see anything really through there whatsoever so it's a little bit of a cop-out if you like but as I say it's one of those things I can't see the point of really totally detailing it up because you're not going to see it that said if you want to do that so you've got a perfect one then by all means do so and then send me the pics Okay, so one of the bits I'm working on now is the actual um, ammunition uh, for the mini guns that fits on the sides. We'll just bring you in a bit. These are the actual bits we've got here, um, and the actual gun is going to fit to, um, just like that. So by the time it's got some dry brushing and a little bit of colour on it and bits and pieces like that, that'll be really okay. So that's fine. 
then what we've done here we've made a little drum an ammunition drum hopefully you can see that now the way we actually did that is literally is a block of resin which is just a block off of a um, old uh, cockpit um, tub or an ejector seat bottom just off of a resin seat I always keep the little blocks because they come in really really handy for this type of stuff roughly scaled it up um, sanded it to shape and all the rest of it then all we got on the top there is a piece of plastic card running along cut in two and then we've got a little bit of rod which is that little handle that comes off and then obviously the feed will come right off of the middle there and go up to the gun and then literally all we did was paint it gray um, as you can see just like that paint that gray and it's in job done the other thing as well we've done at the back here we've actually painted up the actual area for the um, the inside of the um, door well there as it fits on because obviously when you do it like this when this bit comes in um, you, it's all grey in there um, and you obviously where we've done it we had a bit of black floating around it and things like that the other thing we need to do as well is fit this side door um, onto the outside so we can paint that up as well so literally we're just going to drop that in just like that come along not extra thin we'll just drop that down the sides and let the capillary action Pull that all the way around and weld that up, just like so. And then as that sets in there nicely, then obviously on the inside, we need to paint up that inside with a gray, which I can just do with a brush. And then once that's locked in, we can get one of these handles um, that'll come along just like this. And then that'll fit right across there as it is. So the mini gun can fit in there and then the can will go on the floor and the bits and pieces will go down just in here so it all fits it up nicely so when you're looking through from this side you'll see the ammunition can and everything from the other side just through on there and then vice versa so you can see across and then when you look down in you can might be able to see a little bit of detail back there just like that so that's those bits done for the minute as soon as we've got those dried painted and in we can then bring these two fuselage halves together we can get the roof on because then all the gun bits and pieces like that we should be able to do them no problem at all from the outside getting them in and then what we can do is I said get these in get the floor up and then we can leave it for about 24 hours to totally go off and then we can get in there with a the sanded filler because this bottom plate is going to need a bit of work to get in okay so we got the, the gun parts in there now so if we can just zoom you in through the window there there we go you can see it um, just on the the inside they're in like that that gives us a nice one and then obviously we've got the other one on the other side um, there we go see so yeah, that so the guns can go on there then we can all we got to do is put the ammo feed belts through which is something we can do when it's all closed up and then we can actually put in some a little bit of electricals and a little bit of wiring but that's those bits on just like that so hopefully those will really bring it to life and give something quite a stable platform for the guns to stick to okay so the next thing we can do is pop the roof section on which is the bit where you say goodbye to all the detail and all the hard work you've been doing. So we'll get that on. So same way again, we've got a little bit of CA glue, just super glue. So we're just gonna put it a dab in these little notches you get at the top quite a bit. So we're gonna go up there and we'll just put a lump, a bit of a blob at the front here. Stick it in, all in like that then. Just squirt with kicker, just to lock that in. Give it a blow. Just to speed up the drying time and then this back area here we can just make sure that plumbing and wiring is all happy to be sort of manipulated a bit we're just going to make sure it all fits in and it's nothing that's going to obscure anywhere so when you're happy with that then again more super glue just in that top join well that's sticking your finger in it preferably there we go so that's in there like that so we'll give it a squirt or kicker that'll help there we go that's that locked in so we just give it a drop more just on that top edge it's just a quick speedy way of doing this so just go one there one there just a bit in there perhaps There we go, it's quite a nice speedy way of doing this instead of just, if you were doing it with glue, you'd have to wait for it to get together and bond and all stuff like that. Yet yeah, this way you can do this very, very fast. That's great. So we just got to do this, this back edge. Okay, 
Okay, it's good. We kick out, pinch and hold. Dry nicely, and then that way you get very nice seams and joins around it. So there we go. That's those who it's done, and it's all together and everything. Just like that. Now, if you want to, you could sand these down just a bit if you find it has trouble all fitting together. But there we go. That's all okay. Now you probably will see daylight through uh, inside there and all bits and pieces. But there again, don't really have to worry about that because these bits, <coughs> once it gets inside, hopefully. When we're in there, you won't be able to see those things. Now, the one thing you are going to have to take care of is the underside of the engine here. This little part in here needs to be painted because obviously you can see through it, and obviously just this area up in here. Two things: you either spray it black, the internal greeny colour that they have, or the grey, whichever way you're doing it for your particular um, force. But if we just have a bit of a dry fit now, we can see how it actually is going to fit, and make sure we're all happy how it's all going to go. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make sure it's all in there and we're happy. So we just go a bit of a kick. Don't worry if you've got any super glue marks as well, because all we do is, and later on, we're going to give this a blast with some sand wash to dusty it down and all the rest of it. But it all fits in there nicely. But we don't have to worry about these areas we were worried about with these bays that we put in for the uh, electrics bay and the refueling point. They're nice and clear. So then what we'll do is pop the other half together. Just to make sure it all is going to go in together. So we're just checking there's good clearance down those. We're okay with that. There's a tiny bit going to touch up here at the front. So we're going to have a quick sand at that. So just having a look. So at this point here, so take our really strong heavy duty file. We're just going to literally take a tiny bit off. You could use a Dremel on this just to speed things up or whichever way um, it's easier for you. So we'll just give it a quick sand just to take that down is just this little corner up here and we'll just try it again and then we're going to need just another little shave just off of that as well so what I'll do is we'll get these areas painted off we'll sand this down until we're nice and clear so it can fit on there no problem and then we can get it all together and all sealed up um, and really bring the fuselage together Okay, so we basically, we just make a bit of room here. We've basically been doing a little bit of test fitting and a bits and pieces like that. What I've had to do is just sand down um, a few of these little areas, just a little bit more, take them down a little bit um, less because they're just encroaching a little bit when this all fits together. So also what I've had to do is just sand slightly into these two areas just in here, just to take a little bit off really um, to make it a nicer fit. But, just give that a clean out. We can safely say now we can actually get this um, all in together so we just line it up now what you actually got is these little marks at the top these little ribs they fit in amongst them so basically once they're in they lock in at the top and this bottom one goes on and then once you line up those top bits just like that and you're all happy and you can get them in and then this part literally comes in here and fits in. Now it's going to take a bit of a squeeze to get in, but as you can see, it does sit in there very nicely with no real major problems, um, but it will be a case of banding it up and getting in there very tight and all the rest of it. One little thing I did notice, obviously we've got the lights um, just down here under the nose, which is something I'd like to do about. So what I'm going to do is drill and take those out completely. Um, then obviously underneath it's black anyway, so you won't see anything through, but we have the lights then hanging down. So all we're going to do is literally just take them clean out. So we're going to pop a hole right in the middle of each one like one through there one through the other and then by getting it in, in here with a knife we can just go around and we're just going to score out where those um, little areas should be so if we just bring you just down here a touch there we go you can see what we're going to roughly get onto here but we're just going to pop this in here and we're going to pop in with a knife and we're just going to score out Okay, the actual area itself. Now it's just going to take a moment, so if you just bear with me for one second. Okay, so now it's time to sort of seal this up, comes the good bit. So what we're going to do, we're all happy with how it all is and all the bits and pieces, because um, obviously once this goes together, there's sort of no going back with this. 
So what we're going to do, or the way I do this, always pick a side that you want to start with first. So what we'll do is we use the starboard side and we're going to put everything to it. I've already put in the rotor head the areas they're in and glued and firm so we don't have to worry about them. Now just down in here you've got two little tabs and it all fits in amongst those so you need to line them up. The fuselage ones on the actual inner part go to the outside of the fuselage half sides that are on the inside. So that's how that works and basically they slide in and you should find that everything should nicely line up and you shouldn't have anything touching preferably down in these areas because we've checked that that goes in all okay. So when you're happy with that what you can do you can pop in with your other half and what we can do we can obviously you need to juggle it slightly so those little slits the ones running there obviously go to the inside and outside of this one as well and the top goes together so we know that's all okay up there and this one goes together as well so that's all right so then what we can do we can just check make sure we've got a good fit underneath so we just pop these in as well we just do it to one side and we just pinch together to make sure it will all just pull together all okay so we're happy with that so what I'm going to do for the moment I'm going to basically just tap it together with a bit of super glue just to hold it in place for the minute so we're just going to put a drop here, there and everywhere on the side because these are easy enough to sand off straight afterwards once it's gone together. So what we do, we just give them a strip down just like that. Okay, first one, bit of kicker and just hold in place, bit of a blow. That top one. Okay, then the two next ones running down. So what we do, we do the next one running down. hasn't exactly stuck. It didn't really take that one, so what we do we just give it a little bit more just along there, push together. So we just pinch that with our fingers and we're just going to work our way right the way down the top seam just for the moment just like this. So then what we do we just do down here again. Okay, with the old super glue hold. Just hold that so we've just got touching this top one just up here. Just pop this in here. Super glue, push and hold. bit of a blow and there we go that's held in place now tacked in place and then what we can do we can come along with our extra thin and we can literally just brush this in plenty of it down on top of if you go over the top of the super glue as well you'll find it will find its way in and we're just going to basically just weld all this up like this all the way around this part so I'll just finish welding this up for the minute okay so the next step this is now dry on here I've done any sanding and bits and pieces like that now I know at the front it calls for the glass on the front I actually do glass afterwards and then we can do any filler and bits and pieces round I'd rather get the bottom plate in first so what we're going to do with Secured this side, we're really happy with this side, it's going to pull in slightly into the other one. So, what we're going to do is just drop this in for the minute and pop it in, and we're happy how this all sits on this side. Now, we just make sure we're happy that the other side will pull in okay, and that's all okay, and that will come across. So, what we do, we just glue this entire side in. So, I'm going to use a little bit of CA because this is going to be easy to sand afterwards, and I need a big blob of it in there anyway. So what we do, we're just going to run this just around this area, just around like so. And then what we'll do, we're going to make quite a bit of a mess on the top here. Let me just pull that in a bit. And then afterwards, what we'll do is we'll actually go around and do some heavy sanding and then we can just scribe it up as needed. And away we go. So that's that one in. 
just like that. So we'll just come across to the rear section. Now this back here, we're still gonna leave it with a bit of a flap so we can get the rear ramp in um, afterwards. And that will just go in just like that. And then hopefully it will just pull slightly and it will all just juggle in. So we'll just make sure that all fits in and that will come down and go in just like that. So it does all fit, so we don't have to worry about it. So we just continue up this area here. So we'll just put a, a blob just under this edge here, because it's just sticking up a little touch. So we do squirt with a kicker, push it down and hold. Quick blow, just to lock that totally in place and we just work our way back a little bit we just come back here same again just running super glue up squirt with the kicker push it down hold it in place okay and we just do what we do the ramp itself we just flip the ramp out we're not going to come any further than these panels down here and then those last bits we'll do afterwards so that's that bit in then if we just nudge this up and in it should come in now we've got quite a nasty gap here but that's what super glue is really for using it as a quick form of a filler so we just pop that in like that hold it together squirt with a kicker just a blow, just to hold it in place. As it all goes in. Okay, now we've got a nasty gap in there, but what we're gonna do, we're literally gonna pop some super glue in there and just weld it all up in one. So what we do, we just pinch this far side over. Just like that. Squirt the kicker, working quite quickly. Level it all up. Now it is going to be a big sanding job under here, but luckily it's one of those areas where it's a nice big flat area. We can get in there with some meaty files, get down it, and then we can polish, buff it all up. And then under here is going to have lots of little aerials and details and bits and pieces. So just as a thing, we're just going to fill up that hole just down here. Squirt in kicker, work quite nicely, one tiny bit more, just this area here. Not super glue too much. And as you can see, really we're just working our way right the way round and we just work our way up the top and we just pop a little bit just down here, on this back one here. And really, just the thing of using super glue is purely for speed. It's just a lazy way and a quick way of doing it, is that we can do it like this and just work around and tack this all in place, dead firm, nice and hard. It's filling up any gaps as we go, like down here. It's pretty gappy. It's done it in one, job done, finished. What you can do is just pop around it with some extra thin. That'll get in amongst it all and just weld it up with the plastic where it can find to touch it. So there we go. That's that bit done there. So I'll just finish up the front. Okay, so what we've done, we've just used a really strong heavy duty file and we've just sanded off all the join lines as it goes in, but it fits in there pretty well. And say doing it with the super glue, really it's a, a fast, quick way of doing it if you don't mind doing a lot of clearing up afterwards. If you took your time and went around with glue and some bands, you could probably hold it all together very nicely. But really on a big area like this, I think it's a lot easier just to slap in there, go around, bite the bullet, use some filler, do a bit of sanding, get it all nicely done in one, than it is to have little imperfections running around, perhaps if you went around separately. So what we got here, this is my homemade um, Mr. Surfacer, which is basically uh, a thinned um, filler, which is basically a squadron putty, thinned with some cellulose thinners. And then over, all we're gonna do, we're gonna paint this everywhere around this entire thing a bit thin this to be honest so there we go we're just going to paint it on quite liberally quite thick and then we'll come around afterwards and we'll just sand it all away and hopefully be left with a nice finish underneath that we can go around and just rescribe up so we're just gonna 
pop around all the areas where we've done as I say we've left this bottom area still we haven't been anywhere near it so we just do round up here but this stuff because we're going to be sanding it it dries quite quickly but then we want to um, let it dry for a couple of hours to really go off so what we do is pop around and give it a double coat absolutely everywhere just like this and as I say if you see any imperfections at the moment through where you're going to be sanding shortly just give it another coat and take care of it and then what we've got is this area up here where we're going to have to rescribe this panel and bits in so we just give that a generous dollop right over the top just like that and then to save any messing around and all the rest of it what I'm going to do is this centre seam running right the way through everything I'm going to just give it a coat of this right over the top because I know I'm going to have to go around and fill it afterwards so I might as well just do it all in one literally just along like this and just saves any messing about a bit later on so there we go that's him so what we do now we're going to let this dry off um, for a couple of hours to go nicely dry it's a nice dunny, a sunny windy day out there today so what I'm going to do is poke this outside let it dry off nicely and then we can come back sand this all up and then hopefully we'll be ready then just to get the, we can start getting the glass on the front, happy finishing the front, and then literally we can get all those bits together, sub-assemblies, we get the front and the rear parts on here next, and then we can get ready for some painting.